Hey, Lauren. Hey, Brian. Did you know that my sister's husband's mother's uncle was married to your great-grandmother? Wait, how did you figure that out? Does that mean we're related? While I loaded our family trees onto Janice Graph running on Google Cloud Bigtable, ran some queries and found out. Nah, no, I'm just kidding with you. But I can tell you some pretty interesting things about the Greek gods. Let's check it out. Janus Graph is an open source distributed graph database. Amongst its many different features, one of the key strengths of Janus Graph is the idea of pluggable storage. You can use various storage backend technologies such as Apache Cassandra, HBase, or in our case, we're going to use Google Cloud Bigtable. So let's go ahead and create a Bigtable cluster. We're going to call this Janus Graph. And as you can see here, there are a number of different options that you can configure. Let's set up a production instance to show what this looks like. We're going to choose solid state disk since we are just testing this and want to run it quickly. We're also going to deploy this in US Central 1 in the F zone, set it for the minimum production size of three nodes for a cluster, and away we go. Now that our cluster is deployed, we're going to use our Cloud Shell to deploy Janus Graph itself, which we're going to deploy onto a Google Kubernetes Engine cluster that we have also created in advance for this. We will use Helm to set this up. While this is deploying, let's take a look at the sample graph that we are going to use for the demonstration and see what that looks like. Here is the sample graph data that we will be using for this demonstration. The sample dataset is both in the Google Cloud tutorial and is also available on the Janus Graph tutorial. The Graph of the Gods outlines the relationships between various ancient Greek gods, their pets, the monsters they battled, and also where they lived. Different entities that you see here with attributes are referred to as vertexes, and the relationships between those vertexes are called edges. So for example, in the lower left side of this graph, we can see that at the start of the vertex labeled Hercules, uh, there is an edge protruding from that on the right, which that shows that he has battled a monster named Cerberus. What this enables us to do is query the relationships between different entities. When storing this kind of information in a regular relational database, it typically requires complex joints to manage, especially so when the level of joining gets multiple layers deep. With graph traversal languages, this makes it far more intuitive and easier to query these different relationships. This also requires a new language to query it, and in Janus Graph, we call this language Gremlin. To start off with, let's just run a simple command to find the name of Jupiter's brother. In a relational database, you would perform a query across two tables. Here, we see that this command is starting from a vertex, denoted g.v, that has the name Jupiter, and we are looking for outward relationships of type brother and want the values of those names. Neptune and Pluto is what comes back, which matches with what's on the graph on the right. Now let's look at the edges themselves. Instead of just looking up where Pluto lives, we now want to see why, which is an attribute of an edge. So the query here also starts at Pluto, but now we're looking for an outward edge denoting where he lives, and we want to look at the reason. In a typical relational database, this would always involve some sort of gods table, a location table, and most likely some form of a cross-reference table between the two. You can start to see how graph traversal makes these kinds of operations far easier. Lastly, let's look at a query with yet another join. Here, we want to see a third level relationship from Jupiter. In this case, we want to see where Jupiter's brother's dog lives. If we see here, the query simply just starts at Jupiter, looks for the next level relationship marked brother, then looks for his pet, and finally returns where he lives. If we see the results here, it's marked as Tartarus, which corresponds also to the visual representation of the graph on the right. So there you have a few quick examples of graph traversal. And what's really cool about this particular architecture is that because it is backed by Google Cloud Bigtable as a storage mechanism, we know that this architecture will allow this to scale as large as the graph is going to grow.
So now you've seen that by using Janus Graph on Google Cloud Platform, you can make some pretty useful connections in the data that you wouldn't normally be able to make in a transactional SQL database. And also, if you want to run this tutorial for yourself, be sure to check out the link below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content. Thanks for watching.